I have a dream that we would have access to super high quality education absolutely everywhere across the globe to absolutely everyone who wishes to participate in it. During the past uh, seven years, I've uh, focused uh, primarily on making sure that we would have uh, the best environment for people who many of here uh, are, are working with education. Uh, so the ideas that we have for making education better would actually become tangible solutions that schools can use with their learners to make their education experience much better than it was before. If we go practically into the topic, I've been working myself uh, with my team for, for the past 20 years on education development. We have done large youth conferences, we have done um, games for learning. Um, we have built DreamApply, which is one of the largest university admission platform in Europe. So we, we have a little bit of understanding what kind of support there is needed to actually make education better for a lot of people. One of the things that we are doing is building education organizations or edtech organizations like edtech Estonia, which actually just announced that there's 50 members now. That's great. <clears throat> And I was listening before very carefully here because I feel that a lot of these people speaking are like my babies because uh, we have been working so hard to make the environment in Estonia better so we would have more high quality education uh, opportunities here developed. So going further, I want to ask you a question. Who has played with Legos? I think absolutely everybody raised hands. Uh, who has played with Legos before the age of four? Perfect. About a third of the people have raised hands. Do you remember if you were able to decide what you want to build? You don't, you don't remember? Some of you do remember. Did you manage to build things that you wanted to build? Yes. If you look at the young kids playing with Legos or actually playing with anything, you can see that they have their own ideas, what they want to do, and they have also um, the capability to achieve their goals, what they have set themselves. And then I would ask, but why don't we believe, or why wouldn't we, we believe that it is also possible in learning, in education, that the kids would be able to decide themselves what kind of things they would be curious about to find out today. And if I would bring you on this journey of thinking, okay, let's imagine that there is like a pile of Lego blocks that you can combine together in a way that is the most meaningful for you at the moment as a learner to build your pathway for learning. How does this sound to you? Could this be fun? Could this be more engaging than just listening to boring lectures? especially if we have super high quality Lego blocks there that we could combine together the way that is the most meaningful for us as learners. So, okay, let's agree that uh, this is one of the possibilities to imagine the future of learning. So I would like to bring you a few examples of how this is already done today. Um, Evolites is a solution for learning basic mathematics. It's developed in Iceland by a young gentleman called Mathieu. And he was inspired by the fact that he looked at his little sister learning mathematics. And the sister was having massive difficulties to understand the basic uh, mathematics things. So he was thinking, why are we still in 21st century torturing young kids with mathematics like this? And he had himself studied uh, psychology and IT. And he was thinking, OK, could I use my knowledge? to make it more interesting, more engaging, and, and more kind of acceptable for young kids to learn mathematics. And he used general uh, theories from psychology to make this happen. So pr primarily uh, theory of uh, uh, reinforcement, flow theory, and space repetition theory. Does anybody know what this means? I see. A few people nodding, but I will just in case uh, explain very shortly what, what these theories are. So flow theory 
probably actually everybody has, has heard about it. It's uh, that we can achieve a feeling of flow. This is a feeling that, that we feel really great about things that we are working on at the moment. And um, there is a simple way to explain this, that if we are working on reasonable challenges for ourselves, then we feel, we'll get this feeling of flow pretty easily. And this level of knowledge that we need to be on is about 85% level. If we are close to 100% knowledge, what happens? We can be, become really bored because we are not having challenges. It's not inspiring for us to learn about these things. So, um, and, and it can be very demotivating. And if our knowledge level is below 80%, we can have the opposite situation. We feel that, oh, it's too hard. I can't really get this. Maybe it's not for me. I should do something else. And if you are now, if, how many teachers do we have here? Quite a few. If you imagine the kids in your classroom who are struggling or who are uh, bored, like, are they motivated or not? So you, you can start thinking about flow theory. Um, and w flow theory basically says that 85% uh, level, if you get these challenges done, you will feel that, hey, I got this. And you get new energy boost to continue learning more and more and more about the topic that you're working on. The theory of re reinforcement or reinforcement theory says that uh, we are going to be more happy on, uh, and more kind of stably working on hard things if we are going to be achieving something and getting a reward for achieving this. So it's basically pretty, pretty simple. So if you are going to work somewhere, if you're going to be exceptional, usually you get the salary raise. Easy, makes sense. Same with learning. And the third is space repetition, which means that um, our brain is very clever. It likes to keep knowledge in short-term memory because it's a lot of work to save knowledge in long-term memory. So uh, the brain all the time calculates, especially when we speak, uh, speak as well, but sleep, uh, that uh, is this reasonable to keep, keep this knowledge for a longer term or not. And uh, if it's not reasonable, it will just uh, not make this data accessible for us in the future. So what we want to do is we want to memorize the knowledge again and again, just before our brain would decide that, okay, this knowledge is actually not necessary and we should delete this. This is exactly the reason why learning for exams is pretty much useless. Because our brain is just clever enough to understand this knowledge I will probably not never, ever need again. And we'll just, you will forget everything the day after the exam. Who has experienced this? Everybody basically has already experienced this. So, uh, so these are theories from psychology that are having a pretty strong track record of uh, giving good results. And this is exactly what he was doing when he was thinking about how can we learn better. So I will show you a quick video about this as well, how it looks like for the kids. It's designed for kids in the age of four to nine. So uh, all the characters in the storyline has a nice storyline. So you build when you flow in, into the methodology, you are building your skills and and learning about actually harder and harder mathematics just on the, as a side product, basically. So you build your superheroes. Changing the, to the next uh, idea. So in Finland, there is a university called University of Jyväskylä, which is one of the top teacher trained universities. And um, one day they had a very clever question. Why is it so hard to teach reading to dyslectic children? And they have neuroscience's capability. So they started to measure it. Came out, it's almost impossible. It's very confusing for a dyslectic brain to understand the methodology that we were using previously for teaching reading. So they were having another very clever question. Hey, could we find a better way to teach reading for dyslectic children? And again, with the help of neuroscientists, uh, they started to see that, okay, 
it is actually possible. So they, they started to build a new methodology for reading, uh, teaching reading, and um, uh, they uh, were introduced to a startup who was willing to make it into a, a learning game, this new methodology. This game has been actually researched by, uh, for example, also Cambridge University, many, many other universities across the world as well. Uh, but when I was reading this research, I was finding that that's really amazing because you can basically achieve the same results in the game as one-on-one -on -one learning with a specialist teacher. Why this is important is that uh, we can massively save, save time from teachers with help of discount solutions. If you have dyslexia, it can easily take 20 work hours to learn reading. If we can replace some of this work time, we can save time for parents or for teachers that can be used for doing so more practical things. And together with uh, friends from the Ministry of Education, we even calculated that uh, when using this kind of approach, we could save up to one and a half thousand times the money that we use currently for teaching children with dyslexia on only this slice of learning how to read. So we can save time and we can save taxpayers' money, which is also, I believe, very important for education. Let's have a very brief look at this game as well. I, mm, ing, <laughs> ing, thing, b, o, d, b, o. So again, a game for about six-year-old kids, and it works. So, question mark. If we, if we believe that Lego blocks are great, the approach for Lego blocks, so we could design our own pathways for learning, and we also know that there are people out there, there is a lot of people all over the world that have amazing ideas of how to make something better about learning. How can we make more of these things into tangible learning solutions that everybody could benefit from. So um, I would call these things startups in education. And I define the startup in education this way, that there is a small group of super enthusiastic people. Usually they have had their own challenge or problem in education that uh, they are like obsessed with solving. They would like to contribute into making this happen. And um, uh, they also would like to follow the principles of scalability and the principles of sustainability to make these, uh, these ideas a reality. Explaining very briefly, scalability meaning that it's okay if we are just starting to work with one child or uh, with a group, like let's say one classroom, to find a better way to teach reading. It's totally okay to, to start from that, but in the back of our neck, we should have the idea that if we are going to be successful, we should use, uh, we should build it this way that the teacher in the next village could also take advantage of this. And if a teacher on the other side of the planet needs this, they should also be able to take advantage of this new, new approach or, of uh, le learning or teaching. <coughs> and principle of sustainability here means that we would be able to pay fair salaries to the team members that we need to offer this super high quality service. Because in education, I would ask you, would you be okay to have average quality or below average quality learning opportunities for your children? How do you feel about it? Below average quality, is it okay for you? No, nobody wants to have average quality learning opportunities. Everybody wants, and, and parents are willing to invest in having high quality learning opportunities. So we should make this uh, happen as well. Now, how can we help the people that have ideas of how to make something better about education? In Estonia, we have been working on um, a thing called startup ecosystem development for education. And uh, how this happens is that, firstly, we need to inspire people that have ideas of how to make something better about education that you can actually make it happen. Who has ideas of how to make something better about education? I see at least uh, one third of the people here. So <clears throat> what other things are on the pathway of making these uh, things a reality? We have quite a few bottlenecks that need to be tackled. Today, if your child comes home from the school 
and sits behind the computer and starts to Google about how to build rocket engines. They, and they will actually try to, try to build something about uh, rocket engines. What will happen? Nobody in the formal education system will find out about it. Although very practical knowledge is going to be learned uh, through this process. I have two kids, so, so two sons. They have been doing this a lot, so no, I know that they have learned a lot, lot about chemistry, physics, math, and so on uh, within, in this process. And they have been super excited while doing this. There is a very long list of other challenges as well. But all of these challenges, if we want to, we can make this go away. But it needs decision makers to make the decisions to focus on this. And this is maybe the most ugly part about this, that I see that there are systematic challenges of getting the right decisions done. So we would have a, a really great environment for the innovators to improve or do, do the work that they need to do. Just bringing you to a small journey with me. Who has been to the spice market? So who hasn't been? For you, I will explain a little bit. It's a special market where you enter the, the market, and there is an amazing amount of different spices lined up in a way that is the most beautiful for you to see. And you are walking in there, and you're straight away inspired what kind of beautiful dinner you could make for yourself, for your, for, for your loved ones, using these amazing spices. Now, this didn't happen overnight. We didn't have this uh, inspiring environment for spices for, like, before. It has been probably developing over a few thousand years that we have achieved this kind of situation where we have such a great environment, where, where we are straight away inspired when we enter this uh, context. Why couldn't we imagine this happening in education? Why couldn't there be an environment in learning where the learner is stepping in and straight away starts the flow of curiosity? Oh, wow, I'd like to learn about this. It's so interesting. Does it sound doable? I can see a few nods. I truly believe that this is totally doable. How could we coordinate this? Of course, quite a few times AI has been mentioned here today. This is just an example of how we could coordinate this with the help of AI. So we could have a massive network of all, of all sorts of different things that we can learn, and we can measure them, and then uh, we can uh, also include the, all this knowledge into a digital diploma that always works together with us. So we don't have to prove anywhere that we have learned about this already. There's many other ways we can use this as well. Actually, quite a few projects around the world are working on making this happen at the moment while we speak. I'm inviting you to take lead, actually. So if you have a friend who is dreaming about making something better about education, let's support these friends. They will need all the support today that we can give them. Trust me, I've seen a lot of them. Um, let these friends build, or if yourself you have this kind of idea, start building these things. If you're running a school, try to see as well how you could inspire your teachers or your kids' parents to do this. And let's build startups out of these solutions that provide good results. So everybody across the world and ourselves would have access to better quality opportunities for learning. Now, if what I was talking about makes sense to you and you'd like to contribute, don't hesitate to get in touch with me and let's make this happen together. Thanks very much.